Praise the Lord. Uh, Thank you. Brother Ish Thank you. is over here and he <laughs> wants to share his testimony today. Uh, so, Brother Ish, why don't you tell us, you know, what is your background? Uh, so, my background, where are you from? yes, I'm, I'm from Pakistan. I was born a Muslim. I was a Muslim for a good, I will say a good 20 years. I was a Muslim but, um, and I was looking into both um, Christianity and Islam at the same time during my last in the, in the last two years of my in the, in the last two years of my conversion um, to Christianity, I was looking into Islam and Christianity deeply to see if I really was into the truth. No, but and before that, what what is your background? Oh yeah, family, so my family uh, Muslim. Yeah, Muslim. Yeah, my family Muslim. You're Sunni Muslim. It's paying five times a day. You went to Mecca, going to Saudi Arabia, doing all these traditions and like um, reading the Quran, going to mosque, memorizing these surahs in the Quran. So you know Arabic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To I, read the Quran I know Baha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baha. I've memorized a lot of these things. Baha. Okay. And um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, so and um, after that, what happened? What made you start looking into other faiths? So what made me start looking into other faiths was um, these. It was pretty much seeing um, these Christians and seeing the encounters they would have with Jesus, and like they would start seeing visions of them, dreams of them, and I was thinking like, why don't Muslims ever have these? Why don't Muslims ever have these encounters with Muhammad or Allah on a regular basis? Why is it always Christianity? And then um, yeah, on that basis, I thought maybe you know like Jesus may be the truth and I was only 15 at the time but um, yeah so like um, uh, so are you still in Pakistan at that I was no I was um, I'm, I'm from Pakistan my ethnicity is from Pakistan okay, but okay. I'm British, one, British, British one. Yeah, okay. but yeah so during this time I was like um, just going back and forth in Christianity and in Islam praying to both gods and then after like three four years I like um, was going for a real real hard time and I, I went through depression and I went through like really bad health problems and I was praying to Allah and to the and to Jesus, you know, to take away my problems. But um, it was it wasn't going away. It wasn't going away. And I, I during this time, I even went to like um, actually before this time, I went to Mecca as well. I went to Mecca as well um, to 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 see if God was real or not. To see which God was real, because as I said, I was like on the on the fence. So I was saying to, I, in, during my time in Mecca, I said, um, "Who is real, Allah or Jesus? Which one's real?" And I still had no answers at, at that time. But it was, it was during my health problems, as I was saying, and my mental health problems, I heard a voice came to me in the inside and it says, pray to the Father. And this voice was surrounded by a presence. It was, presence was, it was, a, real, it was a divine presence. And I was praying, and as I decided to pray to the Father, and bear in mind, during this time, I prayed to Allah as well, and this presence was not coming. But when I was praying to the Father, this, in the name of Jesus, this presence grew, 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 stronger, stronger, stronger. And eventually, this presence stayed, in me, stayed for me, uh, with me for a good two weeks. And within three days, my mental health went away, my health problems went away, and I felt a, a complete from change. And then, um, after, so sooner or later, this presence went away. But then, um, I still decided to like pray to. I, I decided to set Islam aside, and I decided to, to pray to the Father in, in the name of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And then, um, but, but uh, sorry, brother. For you. Yeah. Uh, I just want to know. You know, you, you started praying to, uh, to Jesus yeah, yeah. and to Allah. Uh, at that time, didn't it, uh, you know, your Islamic upbringing, especially, telling you that you know Jesus is not God? Uh, mm. How how did you make this decision to start? Uh, uh, is, is it just because you saw Christians having this? I think I, I saw because I was young at the time, so I wasn't really much. I was much of a, like a. True. I was a person who would do anything. You know what I mean? Like just right. just look okay. at anything. You just wanted to try out. Just something. try just try anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And like yeah, as I was saying, like um, after this presence went, I one day I was praying into my room. I was praying into my room and this spirit came into my like empowered over me and just like hugged me tight. And I instantly at the time I was I, I thought to myself, I was, I was like, wow, I feel I feel my heart being sealed. And it's crazy because I remember reading the Bible later on, like after like a couple of months later, and I read a verse in the book of Ephesians, chapter one, I think verse I can't remember what verse it is, but it says that you will be sealed within the Holy Spirit to the day of redemption. And at that time I knew that this was the Holy Spirit that came upon me because at that time also I believed, in the, I, believed I, I gave I believed in the Lord Jesus and that's when it came upon me so I knew that this was none other than the Holy Ghost okay so now that you were a Christian so immediately after that did you start believing only in Jesus or did so you still have okay yes yeah, so I still I still had a lot of doubts okay. and it, funny enough that even my mum right she told me to um, she told me it was a demon that came into me like a jinn and she told me to do this like kind of um, this prayer to for like deliverance so you could get remove this so I was like okay let me try and let me try and test the spirit because I was young so I, I tested it like the Lord the Bible says to test every spirit so I was like okay let me test the spirit so I did the deliverance prayer for Islam to see if this could get removed mm -hmm. but it still wasn't get removed and I tested it and it wasn't get removed but 
when this this spirit that was in me was just it was just working according to the way how the Lord wanted to. And the spirit, the spirit that was in me, like every time I would talk about Jesus, read my Bible, it was just working powerfully. And I saw the spirit change me into a new person. So I I just know that this was from God. Can you explain? Because a lot of Muslims do not yes. know this experience. So can you explain? I mean, no, there, there are so many things about when you feel something, you yeah, just yeah. cannot express it. But how best can you express what this feeling was? You know, is this feeling of peace? Is, is a it feeling of calmness? Very, and and yeah. something that you just know that it is God. It's something that you just know is the is God. It's something that you just know. Like uh, even when you mention the name of the Lord Jesus. You will, you will feel you will feel that spirit working in your heart like for example like if you go to preach the gospel sometimes you will that spirit will be working inside of you and you know that's not you but it's the it's something greater that's working inside of you and uh, the, yeah this feeling as i said it was nothing that i felt in islam this is a, a divine feeling a feeling of love peace joy and it was just a it was a, it was a high it was a high feeling and it removed and one thing this one thing as a muslim i used to have a really bad fear of death right and no matter how much pray i, I used to pray just so i wouldn't go to hell but as this feeling came to me, and as I got baptized in the spirit, instantly the fear of death went away. You know, so I, I it's just so many things aligned with the within the scriptures. You know, thanks God. So now that you started, uh, you know, with these doubts, you're Christian now, but you have all of these doubts. How did you deal with those doubts? Oh, so yes, what I were those doubts in the first place? Yeah, I started having doubts if um, if Muhammad was truth or was it Jesus. Mm -hmm. So like, um, that's when I looked into the scriptures and the hadiths. Okay. And not only that, I surrounded myself with the Muslim community. So I lived, with, I lived with a lot of like Muslims, and I surrounded myself with them. And I, I also surrounded myself with Christians. And one thing I saw about Christians and Muslims that Muslims were never able to defeat their sin. No matter how much Muslims tried, they were still in pornography, still in, still in lusting of women, still lying, still in their anger issues. But with Christians, I saw, I saw a new creation. Other myself, I used to struggle with a lot of sins. I had an addiction for two years. And this addiction completely went just like that. And it's been like two years since I did not start dab into that addiction. And only Jesus could do that. I tried to pray to Allah, he could not fix it. Yeah, so you got your deliverance. And but the, how did you deal with the doubts about okay. Muhammad? So so the doubts, um, the doubts I dealt with it. What by, were the doubts? So it's most of like um, was Jesus did he really was he really resurrected? Was he really crucified? Was uh, was Muhammad is the Bible corrupted? Was Muhammad the final messenger of Allah? That like, was he was he was the final revelation given to him? These were just kind of like the little doubts I, I kind of had. But ultimately, it was the power that you saw in, you know, deliverance. It was the power, is the power of God, which convinced yes. you that. And one thing that uh, probably convinced me, um, one thing that probably convinced me during these doubts is um, I saw in the um, in the entertainment side and the media side as how Jesus Christ is the only name he mocked. You see, all these musicians. I used to be into my music, and you see, all these musicians they always mock Jesus. They never mock Allah, they never mock Buddha, they never uh, mock Krishna. Jesus is always the one to be mocked and to be insulted. So this is how I knew like there is a battle between two kingdoms, good and evil. Evil, which is Satan. Good, which is God. And Satan, which is evil, only goes against Jesus. Why is that? Yeah. And uh, okay, so now that you know that this power is 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 Jesus. Yes. Okay. You you get. How did you give your life to Jesus? And then what happened after that? Yeah. So um, yeah. Just when I, did you give your life to Jesus? It was in 2020. 2020 during Feb February time during lockdown time. Yes, I remember. Like um, yeah, at that time I, I probably dedicated my life to Jesus. I wanted to like um, I just he just did, when the spirit came upon me, it was literally leading me to things. It was leading me to want to pray, want to read the Bible, want to do all these like good things, you know. Mm -hmm. And it convicted me of sin. Can, when I went up, like convicted me of righteousness and convicted me of like unrighteousness, and right. just to lead me to all kinds of truth. Amen. And so now, once you gave your life to Jesus, how did your family? Did you tell your family? <laughs> uh, if you told them, how did they? Yeah, yeah uh, I actually hid it for them for a good year, and that's when I t my sister found out. I don't know how she found out. It's so weird how she found out. But yeah, when my family found out, it wasn't very good. It wasn't very good. Like they, my mother, my mother started crying. My dad like. They stopped talking to me for a while. Uh, like they had many, many, many issues in the house. Many, many issues. You can, you can imagine like how, how like insulted I would get. Like, and like yeah, just like I just have to stand my ground, just be strong, and you know, I just deny, deny that. Did that give you an opportunity to preach your faith to them? Yes, I remember my mother. My mother started telling me. She said, Ishmael, I'm starting seeing all these crazy dreams of like this darkness around me, and like somebody like just kind like these, all these like beings coming around me, and like she started, My mother had. She told me she had like a vision or like a dream, or of like hell. Mm -hmm. I told my mother like this is Jesus giving you these signs. 
But mother, my mother's still making it now to be something else, you know. But hopefully one day they can come to the Lord. How did the you, you said you were living along alongside multiple Muslims? How did they react to your conversion? What did they tell you? Well, so, uh, yeah, a lot of Muslims. My friends, my school, old friends, when they found out, um, yeah, they actually started cursing me, insulting me, and um, yeah, just. Just, just, just the way how a normal person would react is to leave, to um, leave the faith uh, as a, as a, um, as an ex-Muslim. So like a, a new, uh, when you leave, when you when you leave um, Islam, uh, as a especially as a Pakistani Muslim, they were just uh, the, the the most common thing they would say is like you got a demon inside of you, you got a jinn inside of you, and they would say, oh like um, Allah will curse you and you will face a severe punishment for this. You know, work, making Jesus out to be be God mm. and just stuff like that. I, I wouldn't say I had like any violent threats, uh, violence okay. on me, nothing like that. Okay. It's just that the, you get these verbal just threats these verbal, and isolation verbal, verbal and being isolated. Yeah. Okay, so now that you've accepted Christ, your family knows about it, uh, how do you live your faith? I mean, what, is, what are your next goals so and objectives? It's, it's actually crazy because when I came to Jesus, I, I, um, I, I started to study Islam and Christianity. To just look more, like to dig, to dig, dig, dig deep into, you know, like the history and everything. And I found myself like I found I, I had a lot of documents and a lot of notes on these kind of topics. So I, I once uh, one of my friends actually his name Jason he he said oh why do you come to speakers corners? It'll help you a lot this and this. So when I um, actually having these notes as well, I was like okay I, I might as well make it into use and have discussions with Muslims and reveal to them the things that they may not know. And also I am still learning as well like on the side on the Christian side as well. But I still I found a lot of things on the Islam side that Muslims are not aware of, and I want to go and share this to them. That they, their eyes can be open to the to the light. Amen. Amen. So you feel that this is your calling in life? That I thought that is. Yes. I feel. I thought it is. Yes. Yeah. 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 A lot of people said it as well. Like my friends, he said you should like go on evangelize the Muslims. And I feel like. Um, Do, I feel like don't, don't you think that this would be dangerous? Uh, you know. Well, could that be uh, endangering your life? Or I mean, how do you react to that? Yeah, you're. I think you're in danger every day of your life of being a Christian. Because nowadays this word, this world, mocks you and hates you for being a Christian and even mentions the name of Jesus. So like being in the park and like having these discussions, yeah, you're in danger. But like, um, yeah, we just know we're doing the um, calling of the Lord and like He's protecting you and like it's all for His glory. Amen. So, Amen. where will be done, you know? Amen. So, any before we uh, wind up, is there anything that you want to share with uh, with the viewers? For the viewers, uh, yeah, I'd like to say like if you, if you want to know Jesus Christ is the truth, continue to seek Him and find Him. Um, Jesus says, knock and it should be open. Ask and it should be given. Seek and you should find. So, like, if you really want to find Jesus, just yeah, just humble yourself and go and find him. And if you are a Muslim and you are looking to like want to be a Christian, just humble yourself and don't worry about the pride and honor because what you'll see is that heaven and Jesus will be greater than these kind of Amen. materialistic and little things that you have on earth. But that, that's uh, my little advice I have. Thank you, brother Thank you. Ish, and I pray that God will make you a blessing to the Thank people you. that you're from. Uh, you know, that you would go out and witness yeah. powerfully to, to the Muslim community. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you.